This is another Fox News alert. We're getting late word tonight on reaction to text messages thought lost but just found at the center of bias allegations against two former members of the Mueller special counsel team. Questions surrounding the FBI. Chief Intelligence Correspondent Catherine Herridge is here tonight with how all this came together. Good evening, Catherine. Thank you, Brett. Reading to FBI Director Christopher Wray, the Republican chairman of the Senate Judiciary Committee, Chuck Grassley, says texts from October 2016 suggest then FBI Director James Comey's chief of staff, Jim Rybicki, believed Deputy Director Andrew McCabe should recuse himself from the Clinton email case. McCabe's wife got more than $700,000 from Democrats, including longtime Clinton ally Terry McAuliffe, for a state Senate race. FBI lawyer Lisa Page writes, Rybicki just called to check in. He very much 100 percent believes that Andy should be recused because of the perception. Agent Peter Strzok replies, God. Later, Strzok writes, I assume McAuliffe picked up, but that doesn't make sense. He said he was interviewing. Maybe he's headed into private practice. McCabe did not recuse himself until one week before the presidential election. The new concerns about the bureau's impartiality come on the same day new texts are confirmed. Writing to the senior senators with oversight, the Justice Department Inspector General Michael E. Horowitz, who first discovered the anti-Trump text between demoted FBI agent Peter Strzok and reassigned FBI lawyer Lisa Page, said a forensic review recovered records between December 2016 and May. The letter did not fully explain why senators were told in August the inspector general had everything, only to learn last week that thousands of records were missing. Before traveling to Switzerland during an impromptu discussion with reporters, the president chastised some media for avoiding the story. I do worry when I look at all of the things that you people don't report about with what's happening. If you take a look at, you know, the five months worth of missing texts, that's a lot of missing texts. As the texts were apparently found, the political rhetoric over the four-page memo documenting alleged government surveillance abuse took a new turn. With the House Intelligence Committee's Republican chairman, whose staff drafted the memo traveling overseas, the ranking Democrat drafted his own version and took a swipe at the media who are covering the allegations. They didn't care what was in the underlying documents. They wanted to make a political statement. Uh, they wanted to feed the beast on Fox News. Uh, they wanted to do what they could to der derail the Mueller investigation. A former FBI agent elected to the House as a Republican said the Democrats' national security concerns are overblown. And I've read the memo uh, along with several of my colleagues. Uh, in my estimation, having uh, had exposure and experience with both FISA and Title III wiretaps, that there are no law enforcement sensitive sources or methods that we would be compromised here. In a letter, the Justice Department expressed its own reservations, calling any release of the memo unprecedented and reckless. The FBI and Justice Department want a review before it goes public. Let us see it first. At this point, nobody in the Senate or the White House or the Department of Justice or FBI has seen this document. Though the senators can't read the document, the minority leader weighed in. Today, it's this memo. On and on and on conspiracy theories with virtually no fact. Some Republicans were pressed on the wisdom of releasing the memo. When the public begins to question the integrity of, uh, of uh, the department and the FBI and, and uh, conclude in the absence of other information that somehow politics has taken over rather than, than, the, than the law, uh, that's a very serious uh, matter and we need to get that uh, cleared up through uh, one, one means or another. The House Intelligence Committee would not comment on reports the memo identifies McCabe, Deputy Attorney General Rod Rosenstein, and Comey Brett. Catherine, on Tuesday, Republican Senator Ron Johnson made a comment on this show that raised a lot of eyebrows to me and then the reaction to it. And today, somewhat sounded like he changed his tune. We have an informant that's talking about a, a group that were holding secret meetings off-site. There is, there's so much smoke here. There's so much Boy, suspicion. Let's, let's stop there. A secret society, the, a secret meetings off-site of the Justice Department. Correct. Your, and you have an informant saying that. Yes. This text message seems to be a comment about secret society was in jest. Do you agree that it appears to be it was in jest? It's a real possibility. Saying it's a possibility. Catherine, what are you hearing about the dust up over those two words, secret society? Well, we've confirmed the text message was sent one day after the election, and Page writes to Strzok, quote, are you even going to give out your calendar? Seems kind of depressing. Maybe it should just be the first meeting of the secret society. 
Fox News is told this is the only reference in the 384 pages of FBI text provided to Congress last week. But for some context, three weeks later in December 2016, the five-month gap of missing text begins, and no one on the Hill knows what they show. And whether they back up Senator Johnson's whistleblower, who claims senior FBI officials held these off-site meetings. So we'll see when those newly uh, recovered text messages are provided to Congress. Brett. Okay. A story that changes every day. You Catherine, bet. Thank you. You're welcome.